the official podcast of the 127th Wing, Michigan Air National Guard. I am Staff Sergeant Drew Schumann with the 127th Wing Public Affairs Office. With this new podcast, we hope to reach you, the Team Selfridge community, on a whole new medium and make it easier to access up-to-date information from the 127th Wing and Selfridge Air National Guard base. First, I would like to send it over to Brigadier General Rolf Mahman, commander of the 127th Wing, who was at Wing headquarters this month to deliver his January address to members of the Wing. Good morning and welcome to the January drill. As I reflect back on 2019, I'm always amazed at all the work you have done to make this place great. We've done major deployments, major inspection, just all the work that goes with it. I'm just truly amazed at what you can accomplish. Looking forward into 2020, we again have uh, multiple deployments on the schedule and a two-day exercise over the drill in September. Leading up to that drill, we're going to be doing multiple training events to make sure that we are ready and we can execute well for that event. Probably the largest event that we have scheduled for this year is the Open House and Air Show on 6 and 7 June. It really is going to be a fantastic event and it'll kick off the next 100 years of Selfridge. Our demo team that we have this year is the Canadian Snowbirds, and it is their 50-year anniversary, and this is their kickoff show for the season. They put on a fantastic show, and I'm looking forward to uh, watching them just do their aerial demonstration. Along with the Snowbirds, we have other aerial demonstration teams here as well. We have the Air Force's A-10 demonstration team, and also the Marine Corps Harrier demonstration team. In addition, we'll have other flybys from World War II aircraft, and other aircraft in the Air Force inventory. On the ramp, it should be full with aircraft from our Air Force, from our Navy, and from our Marine Corps. It should be a really, really great event. It's our opportunity to open up the doors of Selfridge as part of a cornerstone of Michigan communities and let our community in to see what we do on a daily basis. I'd like to move on to talk about our three priorities moving forward. Those priorities are culture, readiness, and people. Culture, we had a great discussion at our Resiliency Tactical Pause. We talked about the word grid, about what we think we are as, of an organization right now. And now you should all have in your squadrons a word grid of what you want the culture to be within the organization. And I need everybody's help to make sure that we can get to that uh, ideal place. I'd like to really focus in on the priority of people. That is all of you. We are stewards of a huge public trust. And as leaders, we have a responsibility to develop all airmen to protect that public trust. Looking through that lens and the lens of the climate uh, survey that we uh, took, you have told me our challenges and our hits. Let me tell you some of the challenges that you've come up with. Leadership development, organizational processes, group cohesion, and inclusion. In your written comments, you really had a lot to discuss about communication. And that's something that I really want to focus in on because that's all about people. From a communication perspective, you really focused in on a lack of a predictable drill schedule, knowing what's going to happen when you show up for Saturday morning. So one of my objectives is to actually produce a schedule that has all the wing big events, hand that down to the squadron so they can fill in the little events so you know what's going to come when you show up Saturday morning of drill. Now we have to balance that schedule with operational security. So publishing something like that, we have to be careful. So it may not be to the level of detail that you want, but we're going to do our best to get as much information out there. The outcome of a military operation anywhere in the world, whether in the desert, tropics, or permafrost. Attack helicopters are always close to ground forces, instantly respond to requests from the ground, and terrify enemy units. The MI-17V5 and the MI-171SH are versions of the most commonly produced helicopter in the history of Army aviation. They are reliable, low-maintenance machines capable of transferring 37 people or 4 tons of cargo to a considerable range. With that, the helicopters withstand great changes in temperature and are ideal for work in high mountain areas. The MI-35M was dubbed Crocodile for its active protection systems, high maneuverability and incredible strike capabilities because there is almost no match for it in real conditions. This helicopter is omnivorous. It is able to destroy armored vehicles, support ground units with fire,
transfer troops and evacuate the wounded from the battlefield day or night in any weather and any climate. The MI-35M will perform the task even if one of its engines fails and at the same time it doesn't need a specially engineered landing site. When this predator goes hunting, the only way to escape is to flee. The MI-28NE can fly at altitudes as low as 5 meters and offers incredible maneuverability. It is designed to search and destroy any enemy targets, be it tanks, armored vehicles, air targets or infantry units. It operates in any climatic conditions, withstands almost 100% humidity and extreme temperatures from minus to plus 60 degrees Celsius. Its armor withstands direct hits by armor-piercing bullets and shell fragments, while modern self-defense systems allow it to avoid incoming enemy infrared homing missiles. The KA-52 Alligator is a scout attack helicopter heavy artillery in the air. This is a new generation helicopter for which nothing is impossible. Its radar can detect targets at up to 25 kilometers and engage them without entering their coverage area. It features a high service ceiling, the ability to move back or sideways at high speed, a quick climb and resistance to wind gusts. The helicopter does not need a special hangar or autonomous base. The alligator will land even on a small, unpaved area, located at an altitude of 4,000 meters. The MI-26T2 is a heavyweight of Army aviation. It is the largest and most powerful transport helicopter in the world. The maximum takeoff weight with cargo in the cabin and on the external sling is 56 tons. With its avionics suite, the helicopter can fly in any weather, day or night. It can perform a variety of missions, including the delivery of people and goods, construction and installation work, eliminating the consequences of emergencies or extinguishing forest fires. The KA-52 Alligator is a scout attack helicopter, heavy artillery in the air. This is a new generation helicopter for which nothing is impossible. Its radar can detect targets at up to 25 kilometers and engage them without entering their coverage area. It features a high service ceiling, the ability to move back or sideways at high speed, a quick climb and resistance to wind gusts. The helicopter does not need a special hangar or autonomous base. The alligator will land even on a small, unpaved area, located at an altitude of 4,000 meters. The MI-26T2 is a heavyweight of Army aviation. It is the largest and most powerful transport helicopter in the world. The maximum takeoff weight with guns and are now successfully perform the tasks at hand in different parts of the world.